How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Solar and today I want to walk you through how to take the basic measurements on your solar panels. Now of course we're going to quickly cover open circuit voltage and short circuit current which is the most common way to assess if a panel is functioning correctly. But also let's string together three of these Trina bifacial panels and run those into EcoFlow Delta Pro. How do we get that voltage and current while it's in operation? There is an easy way to do that and I'll be using this ideal clamp meter which covers all measurements in one unit. Unit. And also, if you don't like the standard probes, I do have another option for you that will make things a little bit easier. So let's jump into it. Now we are on the back side of these Trina 395 watt panels, and because it's bifacial, it'll have the specification label right in the middle. If you have a standard panel, you're going to see a larger specification label, and that's going to be up towards your junction block on the panel usually. Now I'll be using specifically the ideal clamp meter. It is a 61 747 and this is going to have all the features that we need and some kind of bonus features that make it really handy. So first up, we're going to measure that open circuit voltage. And when we looked on our specification label, we saw that that was 41 volts. But do remember that is at standard test conditions. So I'll rotate over to voltage. Now this measures AC and DC. Currently it defaults to AC. So I'll press selection and then we'll, we'll see a DC there. Another benefit to this clamp meter, one, I can kind of save myself from holding it. And two, I have a small screen on the bottom that's gonna give me my measurement. So if I take my two probes, this one being the positive, this one being the negative, but you honestly can get a mismatch and you're still gonna be able to test things out. I'll set the probe in the positive side and kind of pinch the negative. And we see it's 37.6 compared to our open circuit voltage at standard test conditions of 41. So this is actually good. And why it is low, it's pretty much noon. We have awesome sunlight today, but the temperature is at standard test conditions for the air, but the panel is starting to heat up. So it will start to lower the voltage that it outputs above 75 degrees Fahrenheit. But this is a good reading. I would feel confident about this panel, but just to note, that is why it's lower. So if it's cloudy out or it's a hot day or the panel's heating up, just know you will be below that open circuit voltage. That does not mean there's an issue with the panel. That's just associated to standard test conditions compared to what you're testing it. So next up will be short circuit current. So how we do that, let's take our probes out. And this is why I like the clamp meter because it has all the functionality of a digital multimeter, but it has the built-in clamp meter. And this one specifically, not all clamp meters will have your current AC and current DC. A lot of the lower end ones are missing current DC. So make sure you're getting the right clamp meter if you're gonna invest in one. So I'll just go ahead and put that right at the lines here and read out 12.4, which is very close to our spec label, which is 12.2. So this panel for open circuit voltage and the short circuit current is looking good. So moving on to measuring voltage and current while we're actually using our panel. So I have two 100 watt panels here, and this is what I've done historically. I have these little power analyzers I got off Amazon, and you'll see right below the video if you want to link for your reference. And these will give you the real-time current, the real-time voltage, overall what power that is. And then on the lower left-hand corner, it scrolls through multiple other parameters that's measuring, including how much energy during the test has been accumulated. So you'll see amp hours there and then the watt hours. Pretty cool, but it maxes out at 100 volts. But when I step it up to something like this setup where we have four of those 395 watt Trina panels running into our EcoFlow Delta Pro, well, that voltage is gonna be well over 100, so I can't use those power analyzers. That's where the specific ideal clamp meter comes in handy. And actually, I don't even use the standard probes. I have made a little bit of a modification to make this much more convenient. So the way this works, we have our our one end here and I have the negative side coming in to a Y splitter. One side is going into the conversion cable for the EcoFlow Delta Pro and then the other side is actually connected up here to the multimeter. So I took some $8 probes off Amazon 
I actually cut off the probe ends and then I just used my MC4 connector kit to crimp on MC4 ends. So I'm able to plug those into the clamp meter and plug them into the Y connectors, making a much more secure connection. And I can save myself from holding the probes in place and making sure I get a solid reading. So just like you would expect on the other side, we have the opposite Y connector running into the probe and then the probes going over to our clamp meter. Again, we would just then adjust to the voltage and it's gonna default to AC, flip that over. And then there is where we're running 135 volts. Then once we have that voltage, I'll just go switch over and I'll take my probes off and I can switch over to current. And again, that's gonna be DC, not AC. And then I can go down and take multiple different sample points, almost 10 amps running through there. But there is actually also a thermal couple that comes in the kit. So I place the thermal couple right on the top here and then just use some painter's tape to put it against the actual front of the solar panel. Then we can go ahead and take the end of that thermal couple and it'll say you which ones are common, which one is supposed to be going into the positive. And then you'll turn that all the way up and then we'll see 123 degrees Fahrenheit. So that also shows us why we were well above standard test conditions in terms of the panel. So the panel is derating slightly because we're all the way up at 122 degrees Fahrenheit for the actual panel temperature. So that's why this guy is my go-to for any of my solar measurement needs, but it's also what I turn to for residential electrical and also automotive. It kind of covers all those bases. And I think making up little MC4 cables so you can replace those standard probes is a good way to go if you're doing a lot of DIY electrical projects like this. And check right below the video to see the links to this clamp meter, but then any of the other products that you saw in the video. Now remember, this is in the realm of DIY solar. If you're looking to offset your monthly power bill on your home and bring that as close to zero as possible, that is most likely a grid tied professionally installed system for you. You can check a link in the description right below the video and that's where I started off to kind of size my system and get an understanding on how much that would cost for the 11.2 kilowatts I installed last year. You'll just enter your power bill and a little bit of information on your home and within a couple minutes you'll have that dashboard showing what size system you need and roughly what would that cost be after the 30% federal tax credit. Now, if you guys need some more help in terms of wiring panels, the different options you have, you got series, parallel, and a combination of series parallel, check out this video right here. I'll walk you through all those different scenarios so you can pick the best path for your own DIY system at home. So thanks for joining me in this video and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.